Okay, so we are very happy to have Professor Yuan Xingyi from UC Berkeley. Uh, his talk uh, is called Index Theorem for Aesthetic Map Bundles. <laughs> so let's welcome. It's my great pleasure to talk here. I'd like to thank the speakers. <laughs> From the three countries. Um, I first give a sketch of the materials that I'm gonna talk about. So the first one is for pre-priority points in algebraic dynamics. So this, this is in algebraic dynamic systems. Uh, it is mainly application of the Hodinex theorem we're going to introduce this application. Then, to introduce the Hodge index theorem, I will recall the classic one. Actually, just some, some version. Since there are just so many versions for that. The limit of line bundles. These are what we call a uh, dynamic line bundles. So you can view a dynamic line bundle, line bundle as limits of line bundles when you vary the inferior model or you fix the generic fiber. Greater than one. 
goal in the settings to study the behavior of the iteration of x uh, of f. Uh, and uh, there is a uh, one remark coming from the definition is that this f is necessarily a finite map, the finite volume. And uh, we can get a degree which is coming from Q. Degree is Q, Q to the dimension x. So this is greater than 1 from our assumption. So we don't consider all the morphism here. The, the treatment does not work for the morphism since we, we need iteration to take limit. And uh, if it is an automorphism, then we have convergence problem. Now we so they can oh okay. So we define pre PF the set of pre periodic points. Such that X is pre periodic. And that one means the orbit of x under the iteration of f is finite. So it's that f a at c plus f b e x for some a not equal to b. So this is just a set, a subset of x k bar. We take k bar points since we don't have same k to be actually close. Now, a theorem of Dacarudin asserts that this step is very sick dense. Always very sick dense. In X or in XK bar, if you like. So this is a basic theorem. You can try to prove it. It's not that complicated. Uh, I give you some examples. The first example we care about, actually, which is the most important example, is for abelian varieties. So we have x abelian variety. F is multiplication by two or by any integer greater than 2. Let's just use 2. Then we take L to be a symmetric line bundle. We need it to be ample and symmetric. Symmetric meaning that if we use negative 1 to protect L, you get L itself. So then it implies that if we use 2 to protect L, you get L to the fourth power. Then this L polarizes F, and our Q is just 4. In that case, this pre P F is just the group of quotient points. So this is the first example, and uh, if the best field here is non-trivial, then or maybe just global non-trivial, then we can use case limiting argument to define canonic height. This is actually why we introduce this setting. This setting is like the basic requirement to define canonic height use case argument. Now we take the second example. Say x is Pn. And 
the f is just any finite morphism degree greater than one, then f is polarized by the tautological bundle, which is automatic. For some two. So, so we don't have any choice for line bundles. So this is actually a very general example. Since this f can be very arbitrary. Even if the space x is very simple, but the map is very complicated. And after iteration, usually you don't have control at all. But the simplest example in that case is the power map. I want to single out here. So this x is still n, but then f is the square map. <coughs> then in that case, we do have an explicit description of the pre-priority set which is coming from the easy guess. You just take all coordinates to be zero or roots of unity. Of course, you don't want all of them to be zero. So these are basic examples. Uh, Actually, besides example 1 and 3 and some examples related to them, it is really hard to get a description for this set of pre points. Now here, I give you a remark uh, explaining why we care about this set. So this one is an algebraic version of the Julia set. Of course, uh, I'm not going to introduce Julia set, but actually, here is one result. In fact, in the one dimensional case, if the base field is C and uh, X has dimension 1, then the Julia set is exactly the set of accumulation points of the set. If K equals C, dimension X equals 1, then Julia set F is just a closure. minus isolated points. And the number of isolated points is at most uh, two. So you take the closure of the set of pre priority points, you get a closed set. The closure meaning closure under the content component, since we already know that there is this. Now, we do have some isolated points. Now we just take them out. Then this is the Julia set. So to give you some feeling, we look at this example. Then this pre... Now, the same thing is C. Then this pre B F is just all the total points. Then if we take closure, compass closure, then you just get the whole compass force. So in that set, that case, the Julia set is the whole thing. In the third example, since all these xi are zero or roots of unity, so if you take closure, then you can imagine you can have every coordinate either zero or uh, or as absolute value one. So uh, I need a dimension one to really get the Julia set. If, if the dimension is 1, and that's just Q1, then the closure is just 0 infinity and uh, the unit circle. If dimension is 1, 0 infinity and the unit circle, then 
Isolating points are just zero infinity. And uh, after you remove them, you get the unit circle, which is the Julia set. If the dimension is higher, there are different definitions of Julia sets. Now, I introduce our main result here for the first time. So this is joint work with Shou Yang. But they only proved that for dimension one. So 
question from Paris. Okay. Yes, yes, so uh, what you can put, instead of the power map, take uh, maybe the power map, uh, introduce a coefficient, which is a root of unity. Is it? Uh, oh, yes, sorry. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. We do need this to agree. Use the root of one.
sum of squares, then we can get the condition of equality. So this very classical, and I don't know who proved, proved it first. So uh, it is called Hodge index theorem because it, it computes the index intersection index of index of the intersection in this uh, vector space. It is totally naked, but you need to multiply x zero. So now, if this n is greater than one, then if n is greater than one, then we we can just take m squared. It is not a zero cycle, so we don't get a number. To get a number, we we need a lot of ample line models or just line models to intersect it to get the correct dimension. So what we do is we take ample line models L1 L1 up to L M minus 1 and then we let L1 up to Lm minus 1 to intersect M squared. To get zero cycles, then you count the multiplicity, so you get a number, intersect number. Then the result says this M squared dot L1 up to Lm minus 1. And the equality holds if and only if the same result, same property follows. The proof is similar still, you, you try to complete the square. So these are the classical results. Now we try to take limit of this theorem. The reason to take a limit is uh, it's really coming from Number theory. So I first write a little bit about motivation to take a limit. So just one example. I think I assume K is just number field and uh, a over a, a billion variety. And we consider this one, multiplication by two. Now, this is over k. If we want to do arithmetic intersection theory to study heights and uh, random points, usually we want integral models of a. So, if this A, this, this intro model of A over OK. So by intro model here, I need projective or major program. So we need projective flat. So then this proof. Multiplication by 2 is not necessarily everywhere defined. You can take the layer model, then it is everywhere defined, but layer model usually is not projective, unless A has good reduction. If A has better reduction, then 
This is not everywhere defined. Then we can't find a good integral model such that we can extend that map. So this is that. And uh, what we do here is to vary the model in order to make this modification by two defined. So the idea to vary the model. So we first take one A. And uh, this A to A is not well defined, but we can blow off this A to make it well defined. But once we blow off this A, we get a different A. Then this one is different from that one. And then if you want to do iteration again, then you need to blow up again. So by blowing off, we get we get a chain of models. So first we have this A here. And then we multiply by 2, get A prime. But to get multiplication by 2 defined here, we need to plus A prime here, we get A double prime. And then we click away. So that means we get a sequence of models. And somehow you can imagine the limit of this sequence somehow gives you what they want here. And also, if you have a line bound, an ample symmetric line bound here, if you extend here, then of course it is. You can extend here. Actually, now what you do here is to you pull back. I call it L prime. This is to pull back L, and then pull back again. L double prime. L prime, you can keep going. Then you get a sequence of nine bundles. L double prime is an A double prime, and then you consider the couple A double prime, L double prime, and you get a sequence. Now, our result somehow. Do you get a round, like an arrow on the bottom? <laughs> Sorry? The, from L to L prime, they pull back, right? Uh, that's, that's not right error. There's no error here. Okay, that's better. So this construct construction works for the study of canopy heights. Usually, at every level on intro models, you study canopy uh, study just the height by intersection in our kind of theory, and then you take a limit, you get the guaranteed height. So now, I'm going to introduce a delicate line model. So maybe first we still consider the setting of the baby version, this R is D by R. And uh, this, the simple case, R is given R, F is the tractor field, R. Now, X is, this time is this K, projective variety. Now we define X, F, X, not. Mod means model. We're going to consider all line models coming from integral models of X. So this is a direct limit, which is essentially a unit over all models. Projective flat models. Now then, for different models, you can pull back line models, so then you get the transi transition maps, and then you take the limit. Now we define this one to be the completion of by effectivity.
we take completion of this pick hat map, we get this group. So the condition requires a topology. We call it topology by effectivity. It is as follows. Using peak, but do you want to take uh, a peak tensor of the rationals, or um, you want to take? Yeah. So yeah, thank you. So we take the rationals here, here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not not car, just rationals. It doesn't matter here about the condition, but we can use Z here. So this one, actually this is a complicated definition. There is a, an easier definition for that one. So this is like easier. I write it as interpretation. The interpretation is as follows. So we first look at this one, we so in this ball, this m can vary, but m should be vertical. M m should be um, m on the generic fiber should be trivial. This is what we call vertical line bundle because it is dominated by this vertical divider. So then. All nine bundles here have have trivial generic fiber. Then that means after completion, after completion, it doesn't change the generic fiber. So the generic fiber, you can talk about the generic fiber of elements here. And then now we interpret elements here as a nine bundle on the generic fiber with a metric. <coughs> so, so this is it has this. We write it as L bar, which is L with a metric. So here L is a nine bound on X. And this one is a metric. Actually it is a connection of metrics. Metric on L X for all X 
SPX paper. So this is the fiber, which is just a K-bar vector space. You put a metric on it, and then we let X vary. So at every fiber, we get a metric. We imagine this R L, this R X, and maybe L X K bar, K bar. Then if we take a point here, we get nine. This R nine X X L X, which is a small K bar. Sorry, our question from Tokyo. So you you really mean Pico or device? So I don't have an, I, so. I don't understand, understand the, the, the definition of e e effectivity. So uh, uh, you you look at the line, customer line bundle or just the divisor? Um, I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, the way I understand it is that uh, divisor. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. We we should say divisor. It's like or nine bundle with a distinguished section, which is just a section one on the general fiber. It's better to use, use divider to understand that one. Divider. But here we use nine bundles. So L is nine bundle on X, and then we take a metric on each fiber. Now we vary the fiber, we get a connection of matrix, and then we want that matrix, that connection to be continuous. And the Galo invariant. So this is a, another interpretation. To, to get the construction from here to here is very simple. We first start with uh, with model, nine models, nine models on integral models. And then since nine models on integral models have, have uh, integral structures, they just induce matrix automatically. So if L X is the integral model of, of L, then it induces a metric on L. So the reason is you you take this L of X. You extend, suppose you have a point, you extend it to the integral model, you get a fiber which is like an OK bar, and then this one, in this one, is a lattice. At every fiber, you get a lattice. Once you get a lattice, then you get a metric which makes this lattice the unit ball. And then you define the metric everywhere. It is easy to check that the metric is continuous and the Galois invariant. Now, this is for Pick mount. For each pick mount, you get a nine bundle with a metric. Now you can take a limit. This limit process here, this one somehow just means if you take limit for metrics, then the limit is uniform limit. Since this one, someone says if you have two different elements two different metrics in the sequence and you take the difference, the difference is very small. The quotient, quotient is very small, then it's just uniform limit for metrics. So furthermore, if, if this R is complete, it is a DVR. If it is complete, then you can further interpret this metric as a metric on the Berkowitz space. As a metric on 
the performance and identification L over X. You first take the performance space of X and uh, now you get an analytic line bundle over XAN. You can divide metrics metric on this one formally. Any question? So now um, now we have so this is for for R is DVR. Now we go to number code. Now the definition is very similar. I just I just write it briefly. So uh, I have a question. Yeah, one question. Yeah. So uh, uh, when you wrote what you erased just now, you wrote it as an equality, but I think that in the right hand side. You, you need to, not to put just continuous for the usual topology on XK bar, but you probably need the Berkovich uh, space continuity, otherwise you have too many disjoint uh, uh, small disks and you cannot uh, hope that it is true, the quality is true when you just take the continuity for, uh, for uh, the topology on XK bar. Uh, uh, you're right, you're right. So, here it's just continuous on the Berkowitz topology. Here, yeah, you're right. It's, it's more than just continuous. It's only some bounded property. I just cheated a little bit. So now, you can use the number field. Then if x over k is projective, now we can take half x mark this limit a at x x over ok into a model. Now this time this pick half is we tensor to to q. This time, this is the group of Hermitian line bundles. So, it is a pair consisting of a line bundle on the inter model and uh, with a metric, Hermitian metric, on the complex points in the setting of our Kellogg theory. Or maybe you just take this k as a global function field, then you don't have infinity. Just model over your projective curve. So now pick x is completed by effectivity. Uh, now, actually, there is a complication since we have infinite many points on the face. So there are just some requirements about that, but let's ignore that. So this is the identity line bundles we consider. Now we introduce one definition. So by that we mean 
the intersection of the Hermitian I bundle on any curve should be positive, either vertical curves or horizontal curves. And also, we need the chain form of the metric to be semi positive. Now we can introduce our major. How do you understand this picture here? Like just uh, each, is a, is a sequence in each place have a, have a local pick and plus some global condition? What's the... They have a similar like... Uh, uh, Interpretation before you have uh, nine bundle plus a metric. Yeah, you, you, you do have this interpretation. Yeah, so. Uh, so, I'm here. Can be built as you have L. So then you have a collection of metrics. At every place you have a metric. And then you do require some coherence condition and some compatibility. So now the measurement. So in the in the case of DVR, this this condition is automatic since M is somehow is trivial on the generic factor. We assume it's trivial on the generic factor. Now then oh, we need one more assumption. L I R F. Then we have this this one. That's the only equal to zero. Now we consider the condition of equality. But we need one more assumption to get the condition of equality as in the baby version. If furthermore, 
MI is LI bar bounded. So by that we mean some multiple of Li is like more positive than M. So just one means Li bar plus minus epsilon M is negative is net that exists epsilon greater than zero such that this is true for any I. So pass M to a multiple we want. Li plus or minus m is net. So then the positivity is like absolute value of m in some sense is bounded by Li. Li is already net here. Then equality. Oh, if and only m bar is constant. By constant, we mean we mean m bar comes from k times k. So x is over k now should be a. So you can also define k times k is essentially like limit of k o k comes from the base. Pull back from the base.
then as in the number of case, you extend k to the spec, okay, in that case, you will feel it's finally generated. You first extend it to an arithmetic variety over z, or a projective variety over fp. This is your base. And then you take integral models, and you take a limit. Eventually, you uh, define this big hat x, and then you can define positivity. And then you'll get a similar result. So one motivation to prove that for finite general fields is to uh, to use arithmetic method to study algebraic geometry over any base field. Just like the first example, the example of the algebraic dynamics. Your base field is arbitrary k. What we do is we first use Leffler's principle to reduce it to finite general fields. And then now we use integral models. Now we take a limit. We get a setting like this. Then we can use arithmetic to study the the property of the original variety of the general field. Thank you very much. Okay, so any questions? Maybe you will start with the Paris. Any questions from Paris? Thank you so much. Uh, so, when you work with, uh, when you work with a finite generated field, so you said that you, uh, let us say, you uh, you write it as the field of fractions of some uh, uh, model, but then uh, you cannot get things to be flat over it unless you change the model. So you work, do you work with a fixed model of the finitely generated field or, or all the tower of all models? Uh, that's a good question. We, we don't need to vary models. Uh, we just uh, we know Latin theorem to get always get relatively flat morphisms. And uh, we, to write it down, I write a little bit. We need to vary both the base and uh, the total space. So if k is, k is finally generated over, let, let's pick the case of finite fields. This is the characteristic p over, we call it little k, then we first extend to b over k, projected, and uh, with function field k. Now, if x is over k, then we extend to x over b. Now, we define this pick at x to be completion of of the limit. So we take the whole limit x b of this pick x. This we require it to be flat projected. We also vary B, so in order to always get flat models. Uh, I would like to know if there is a simple example of, uh, say, two polarized uh, dynamical system where you know in advance that uh, the intersection of a pre-periodic pre point or the ice dance, but you don't know that. Uh, they are the same. So, it, if if it's possible to construct an example like this, uh, so the examples are we know are coming from group group laws. For example, if you take a billion varieties, yeah, but then the set of three priority points is always the whole torsion group. Yeah. Then you can take two arbitrarily very independent morphisms, but they have the same repeat set. Yeah, but you know it in advance. You know it in advance without using your theorem. I mean, I want to, to understand if you know a situation where you don't know the conclusion of a theorem uh, before. Uh, uh, then we. Then we don't know. We don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's very hard to, to <laughs> check that. <right? laughs> Questions? 
So I think that's all from Paris. Okay, so any questions from uh, from Tokyo? So you made assumption that uh, some uh, something is zero on, on the Zeke forever. So you, you just need numerical zero or uh, rationally zero? Uh, sorry, can you repeat your so question? So we are assumption in this number number field, field case. So you said uh, uh, this intersection product is zero on the, on the Zeke forever. So you just ask uh, it's numerically zero or you 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 need to national uh, equivalent to zero. Or? So you mean that? You mean uh, that's what? No, no, up, up. Yeah, that's this assumption, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, this this equality. Yeah. Yeah. So. So you just need uh, yeah. numerical zero. Inter uh, intersection yeah. number is zero. Equal zero. Yeah. So this is just just as a num as a number. Uh, as a number, right? New numerical. Hmm. Thank you. So, uh, as a marker. So I didn't uh, I didn't get to you. So so you 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 are, you are saying with uh, for for in the limit case. But uh, what what is that the new 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 equation in in the limit case? Uh. Well, in the limit case, uh, what's your question? The yeah, so, um, so, so you, you, you knew this uh, model case, but uh, you, you have uh, proved this uh, limit case. So what, yeah. what is the new, 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 new ingredient in, in the proof? Um, the new ingredient in the proof of the limit case. So um, we use a trick. We, we call it a variational method by Polofsky. So Polofsky is a complex geometer. He proved, uh, actually he, 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 he obtained a simple proof of the uniqueness part of the Calabria theorem in, in the complex setting. But his method is, can be used here. Variational method. So the method somehow says uh, the following: if this m dot l one bar dot l n minus one bar equals zero, as in the third, then we can get the following: we get m dot l one prime dot l n minus one. For any L1 run up to Ln run. If we have that one, then we change the metric. Then his method, there is a very nice trick. By induction, somehow we managed to prove that if we change the metric, then this is still true. Then it's like we get a lot of conditions, extra conditions. Mm -hmm. And then somehow. Thank you. We, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Other part of the question? Thank, thank you. That, that's it from Tokyo. Thank you. Okay, so I have questions from Beijing. No? <laughs> okay, so, so we have no questions. So we thank the speaker again. Ah, sorry. We still have one question from Paris. So, uh, okay. when, you, when you explain the definition of uh, peak, uh, your completion, 
you said that you take all uh, models of, uh, let's say, for finitely generated field over FP. So you, t you, you wrote uh, inverse limit, but you probably meant direct limit. Yes, yes. Uh, what? No. Yeah, it's not right. So, yeah. But you see that in X over V? Yeah, do you write that as a project limit? Right. You think it should be direct limit? Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, it should be direct limit. Yeah. Yes, and then the, yeah. the, to define this completion, you have to. to uh, to uh, some, it is not clear how you one extends your definition because you you looked before just at one fiber, and now you have uh, 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 many prime divisors, and also when you change the models you get more prime divisors. So it is not clear how, what is the estimate that one uses to define this completion. Um, yeah, so it's like for. Uh, we have like infinitely many types of completions. So for each type, we fix a an effective divisor on the base, and then for this divisor we define a topology. We can get a completion. Now we enlarge the divisor on the base to get different types of completions. Eventually, we get all of them. So maybe. Let me write here. Ah, okay. You take a one model and divisor. Okay. So uh, we have x over k, k over k. Now we get x over b over k. Now we take we take this d inside the b effective. Then we get a completion using effectivity by P. Completion of this tape X now. Now then, then take union over all B. But in the number field case, I suppose that you allow yourself to to uh, not work with a fixed divisor, but to to make some uh, uh, to use infinitely many primes. Is it the case? Um, no, we we only have finitely many primes. So every in every step, if this this number field case, then this is okay, and this this D is just like finitely many primes. Yes. So every step, we only need. Well, only very finitely many primes. Ah, okay. Only this completion, not the. Uh, yes, I understand. Yeah, yeah. First take completion, then take a union. Ah. So this is the. This is the. This is by. So I have a quick question about the idea about this athletic line model. I bet I lose the complicated non kind of way he run the competitivity conditions. Um, What's the competitivity condition you put on the metric? So in the number of your cases, yeah. um, it's just like if you think a line model from integral models, yeah. and you get model metrics. Then you want your other metric to be to agree with the model metric at almost all places. I see. Okay. So, any other questions? Any comments from Paris or from Tokyo? No. Okay. So, <laughs> let's sign this figure again.